Hey everyone, welcome to Zero Labs. Today is Sunday, March 1st, 2015. I'm Mark Brash, your host, and uh, as you can see next to me, I have the 3D printer now fully assembled, wired, tested, calibrated, and printing. Uh, it's, been a few, it's been a few weeks since I actually uh, recorded the video that you're about to see, which is the mechanical assembly phase of the, of the printer. There are a few caveats uh, about assembling this particular kit produced by Have It Shop on eBay. And uh, um, in the areas of the mechanical assembly where there were problems with the uh, assembly process or um, perhaps errors in the drawings, things of that nature, we'll stop the time lapse and I'll explain to you some of the, uh, some of the problems that I ran into in greater detail so that uh, if you decide to purchase this kit, you will also be able to uh, get through those those problems that I ran into hopefully with a lot less pain than I did. So without further ado, let's get right into the mechanical assembly. Okay, as you can see, I did get a little bit of a jump start here. I kind of got anxious and just start, started putting stuff together. But here is what the, uh, the, the main frame of the 3D printer looks like. Okay, this is uh, actually uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pieces of laser cut acrylic that were supplied in the kit. The video that describes how to put all of this together is extremely clear as you can see in this picture right here. Um, all, of the, all of the hardware that is used to assemble each of the components is labeled. The bags are labeled. They're actually very clearly labeled and they are correctly labeled. Um, and so they match up to the hardware that is described in the video. The pieces simply go together as described. The, uh, the way this goes together is kind of interesting. There are, uh, it, it's kind of like a little tabs and, little, and holes cut in the pieces that match up. And in a lot of cases, there's only one way it can go together. So you almost can't mess it up. It's, it's really very nicely done. And it's also quite sturdy. Um, You'll see in this picture right here, the sections, the, the way the sections are clamped together is with a screw that goes through the flat piece and then into the mating piece, there's a nut that goes into a little T uh, notch that's, that's cut out and the screw passes through the nut. And then when you tighten the screw, the two pieces are clamped together. Um, <laughs> my biggest complaint with the acrylic is getting the film, the, the, the clear protective plastic film off of the acrylic because a lot of, a lot of times uh, it's, it's tar hard to get it started. But that aside, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's going, starting to go together very nicely. I do have one complaint so far, and that is these washers. They, <laughs> the, the Chinaman who put these together calls them gaskets, and he calls lock washers or split washers, spring gaskets. But uh, be that as it may, uh, these are supposed to be eight millimeter washers that are used to clamp the rods against the plastic pieces that are part of the kit. However, the problem is these, these washers are so narrow that instead of spreading out the force of the nuts against the plastic, they actually concentrate the force of the nuts against the plastic and would be a disaster. I won't use them. I ended up grabbing from my own stock some wa some galvanized uh, zinc plated steel washers that are 5 16ths of an inch inside diameter and those fit very nicely over the 8 millimeter rods. Um, so I will be using these going forward. Also under the heads of the small screws that are used to assemble the acrylic pieces were supposed to be some 3 millimeter gaskets or washers. The inside diameter of these is closer to six millimeters and they are stamped out of such cheap thin sheet metal that not, not only are they sloppy on the screw but they will cut you if you're not careful and they bend as soon as you try to put any force on them. So I won't use these either. And in fact the heads of the screws are wide enough where you don't even need to use these. So going forward I will not be using those either. From here on out, I will be doing this video as a time lapse. And if there's anything important that I think needs mentioning, then I will uh, stop the time lapse and make my comments and resume the time lapse from there. 
I hope you enjoy the video. So I've been assembling the threaded rods that make up the base for the frame of the sliding bed. These are the uh, sliding rails that the bearings will slide onto. Uh, one of the things I needed to make sure was that A, they were parallel. So I matched up the width of the two corner pieces down at this end before I assembled them at this end. But what I'm finding right now is when I set, the, when I set these uh, rails into the grooves, they're hitting the end stops on one end because the rods are too long or the corner pieces are too close together. And uh, the reason that the corner pieces are too close together has become apparent. The thickness of the lock washers or the spring gaskets as they say in Chinese um, the two thicknesses, one at each end, underneath the self-locking nuts on each end, have added to uh, the, or have, I should say, taken away from the distance that the corner pieces sit. So I'm going to have to disassemble each corner and then remove the lock washers on both ends, put it back together, and see if I can't get these rods to sit down inside, inside the uh, slots that are cut for them. If, if I can't, then I'm going to have to uh, cut these down to size a little bit to get them to fit. So yeah, I did have to remove the lock washers underneath the self-locking nuts to allow the corner pieces to spread further apart along the threaded rods, giving enough room for the slide rails to drop down into the grooves at each end. So now, the way I have it adjusted, there is probably about maybe a half a millimeter or yeah, a little more than half a millimeter of front to back play with the rods in the grooves at the top of the corner pieces. Now having, having said that, now that I see how much of a difference it made with the spacing end to end, I may also have to remove the lock washers uh, from the sides of the corner pieces so that the rails are further apart to match up underneath the sliding plate. I'm not sure yet, that may actually be the case find out in a few minutes. All right, so here's where we're at. This is the sliding plate that rides on the on the bearings. I have the eight holes lined up with the two bearings underneath here. These four holes with the bearing underneath here aren't even close to lining up. I would, I'm gonna say they're almost, they've gotta be close to uh, a half an inch off. I don't even know if I can I can get that much back by removing the lock washers and the flat washers. What's going to end up happening is these uh, these threaded rods on the bottom and on this end here they're really not long enough. And if I can't get these holes to line up, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to re-drill the holes in this base plate in order to get them to line up with the with the slide bearings on the rails. That kind of sucks.
All right, I'm stopping the video here because I want to point out that one of the really critical things, critical aspects of, of setting this up is getting the correct spacing between the rails on, uh, on the sliding platform here, okay? Uh, for a couple of reasons. The first reason is the, the spacing of the threaded rod has to align with the spacing. I don't know how well you can see it. There you can see it pretty well. Uh, those two notches, one here and one here, they affix to the frame and the, uh, the width has to be correct. And it turns out that when you get the rails spaced correctly for the platform that sits on top with the bearings, then they are also spaced correctly for the, the, the acrylic frame. Uh, in order to do that, however, I literally had to take the washers, the self-locking, I'm sorry, the self-locking nuts with the plastic inserts and flip them around and put them on the wrong way because the thread is, wow, um, more than an eighth of an inch recessed into it. The thread barely protrudes behind, uh, on either side of the corner blocks. So in reality, these rods should be 20 millimeters longer. And I think they are, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 170 millimeters. I'll, I'm going to measure that right now, just uh, very quickly. Yes, these were the 170 millimeter rods. These should be, these rods should be, all right, at the very least, 180 millimeters, at the very least. Preferably, 185 to 190 millimeters long. So for those of you who are putting these kits together for sale, uh, take note that uh, these, these threaded rods are just barely long enough, and I would never put these nuts on the correct way, only to have the plastic inserts not perform the, the job that they were intended to do, which is lock the nuts into place. And that's the only thing that locks these nuts into place. The other thing you need to, to, to uh, be aware of is that these two slide rails must be parallel. And I mean really parallel, because when you tighten down the screws on the top of the slide bearings for the, for the plate that moves back and forth, okay, if they're not parallel, what will happen is they will start to, to bow out or pull in, depending on how, how unparallel they are, uh, and bind. So you want, the, you want the platter to move freely all the way across. And really the only way you're going to get perfection is with a dial caliper like this. All right. This is, I think I, at Harbor Freight, I think I paid uh, 12 or $13 for it on sale. They normally go for about $25. But with this, I can precisely measure what the spacing is on the rails from one side to the other. That way, when I tighten down the screws on the slide bearings for the plate, I know that it won't bind as it slides back and forth across the, across the, the uh, full length of travel. So let's take this and zero it out. And I am in inches. So I already have this end locked down. All I need to do is make the, the opposite end closest to me equal to this end. And I'll just take the inside measurement. All right, and the inside measurement is 5.197 inches. On this end, I have got 5.189, so I'm very close. Uh, so I just need to let them spread out just a tiny, tiny bit more. Let me just uh, loosen up this one a little bit. One of, the, one of the good parts, however, though, is I'm not using any lock washers, any split locks, on the outside of the, uh, of the corner blocks. So when I tighten the inside nuts and compress the split locks, the outside should not move as I, com as I continue to tighten this down to its final position.
And that was the mechanical assembly. One of the things that uh, I do need to replace on the printer is this Z-axis linear bearing slide, bear slide rail uh, mounting bracket. I don't know what the actual name of it is, but it, it was uh, rather poorly made by the, uh, by the supplier of the, of the printer. It is actually not square at all, and this second slide bearing will not go into the housing and allow the, the X-axis rails to be level. I'll point that out in my final review of the product, but that's what's printing right now is a replacement for this piece right here. Now that I've got the calibration errors out of the, out of the printer and I've got everything uh, dialed in just the way I want, it is now printing directly from an SD card. I no longer have it connected to my computer. Really happy about that. But uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, the mechanical assembly is done. Let's, uh, let's get right into the wiring video. Thank you all for watching. As always, please rate, share, comment, and subscribe. And peace, everyone.